I work. work. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're starting this episode this is the problems because that's what we all care about problem episode but yeah here we go here we go this week's episode is hot work hot work uh last week I had about 13 going on the exact same time while i was there okay so that's different than one so hot work failures so here we go one of them is i hope i don't have any this week <laughs> fire watch <laughs> Where do you actually stand? Because the permit says to clear the area 35 foot. Yeah. No, what do I do with the fire watch? Well, so that's the deal. We don't generally, as an industry, we don't do a great job of covering, as a fire watch, anything beyond, here's how you use a fire extinguisher. Right. So, so fire watch training. We need fire training. watch training would be the first thing. But the second thing is, is yeah, we want to cover where we're standing because if I've got someone who's welding in a room, multiple areas, do I have my fire watch stand where the person's welding and move with them? But how are they watching the first four welds? 200 feet of pipe on a Saturday. We're welding. We're, or we're elevated. We're absolutely. elevated. I got sparks shooting everywhere. Yep. Are they standing where the welder is? Or are they standing at the floor or the bin deck or wherever below are they in where, the all the fi where all the sparks are, are shooting? Are they in the confined space 50 feet in there or are they outside? Well, yeah, yeah. Because I, I had a confined space this week. That. It was 80 feet inside. And the fire watch is like, I'm not sure where to go. I'm like, well, where's the fire? 80 feet in. And you have to start deciding, what, what is that? What, yeah, where, where are we going to have We are going to gonna gonna do, do some solutions there, a, but it's yeah, towards the end. Solutions are going to be at the end. This is just to open your mind up. Also, right. a thousand apologies for so many sips of coffee because I'm really tired. Yeah. So sorry. <laughs> All right, so here we go. So the fire watch, where to stand, and the training of it. Because that's yep. the problem. They don't They don't know where it's supposed to go. We or, haven't covered that. So, yep. so this week, for example, we had a fire watch standing there, and we decided we actually need three more. Yeah. Well, the permit only has a place for one. That means most do. Which, depending on where you get your permit, so is it an internal permit or did you get your hot work permit from an insurance right. company? Where did this permit come from? So and is it actually one, custom for your business? Second one is the permit. Yeah. That's the gap we see. It then has the right data custom, for what you're going to do. Yeah. Yep. It's not customized enough to really capture all of the information that is currently being litigated when a place burns to the ground and we're trying to decide who pays the bill. Because right. that's really what we're talking about here. That's right. So uh, so the permit, for example, the 35 foot, we're going to clear out everything 35 foot. Great. Yep. That's when you start. Yep. Uh, I had a 24 hour hot work project this week. Yeah, Guess things what? are shuffling around. All day long. Mm -hmm. Someone's going to move a trash can over there for yep. the go to break. Someone's yep. going to move a flannel over there. Some weird combo gets but brought in. But it, and was you're clear, like, what? it was clear at 35 yeah, foot when we, we started. We brought in the equipment, and we, the, what we used to bring it in maybe was on a pallet. It's in a combo, wherever. Maybe it's but, wrapped. Yeah. So, yeah. But all of that, so that permit is supposed to capture how you're going to do the job the way your company does it. Yep. So people always yep. say to me, if I'm a contractor, why don't I use the plant one? Because they hired you to do your skill set. You may have three fire watches needed. You may yeah. do you may do hot work a little different than they do. You take, yep. you take a food plant and you get a 10-minute break and you go out there and do hot work in 10 minutes. The 30-minute fire watch is interesting because there's meat there <laughs> six minutes later. Yeah. So is your 30 minute fire, it's not the same, or a mill. It's going to be yeah. different in a mill than it is going to be I outside. Can't, I can't do 30 minutes in a mill. Oh. You know? So, oh, well, we'll just barricade an area out here, and we'll do welding out here. That's great, but how about, you still got to watch it as you're clear of the area. How about outside? Yeah. Grassy areas, yeah. August, it's hot, everything's dry. Right. So the training, we got to think about that so because the training, how do we clear 35 feet in some correct. of those areas? Maybe I need blankets. Maybe yep. I wet down. So the, part, yep. the point is between the train and the permit, the, the people are confused and you just have a fire. So, so. Th I think the biggest thing that I would say next is that go rolls right into training. We're using in some cases really generic training that it doesn't cover those nuances, right. but those nuances are how what they, that's we burn stuff down <laughs> and some people like the projects i've done a bunch of projects the last few weeks that's all these people do for a living yeah so it's not a one-off it's like, a one-off no, to the is, plant but we, that's the way they do the job yeah we brought you in because you're the expert right. at welding on this equipment or in this setting so right. you know we're, we're expecting you to come with the solutions because that's kind of why we hired an so, expert <laughs> so you've got you got to train your people the way you're going to do it for the job you're doing not for yep. what the customer or the host does it the customer yeah is a customer <laughs> right. so here's another weird one so i've got 
do we got to fill out this permit? Do we not? And I said to someone the Why other day. Why is that always the voice? It is, the, it, it is, is the voice. voice. <laughs> but I said to them, here's the deal. Great. You don't fill out the permit. All I want to know is if you burn down the building, is it your insurance or my insurance? And the guy's like, what does that mean? I'm like, well, if you well, burn it down part- and you didn't use a permit, I'm going to say it's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, part of it is, yes, we're supposed to be filling out the permit to avoid all of that. But the signatures on the permit are saying, as manager Jen, I validated this was good to go. That's and right. it met all and of I'm the And I'm keeping intent. it good to go. Yep. I'm managing that hot work scenario as the supervisor, the manager signing off on it for the duration of when it's going on. I'm validating the training meets what it needs to for my welder Correct. as well as my fire watch. I have validated all of those boxes. It's not check, 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 check. Yep. And then we move on. Like they, they are supposed to mean something. Right. And we miss that until it's subpoenaed. <laughs> and then right. we realize how important each one of those check boxes really is that they, they serve a purpose. I, the, I've been at so many locations where they had to leave conveyors running in the area. And they will say, yes, everything's managed in the area. I'm like, well, no, it's not. You still have conveyors running. That gets a so, spark on it and shoots it down yeah. the road. You know, just a few days ago, the fire watch was at- burned down over that yeah, concept. Yeah, fire watch was at the opening. I'm standing, there's a big cement wall. And I look over here and there's sparks coming out because they're doing welding inside this unit. They're right. sealing the hole. Well, guess right. what? It's still a hole. Well, yeah, until we get it closed. So, yeah, all so they're stuff doing all this stuff. Outside. And I'm like, you need a- Someone over there, <laughs> you know, you need a, so is it in the permit? Is it in the training? Is it what they, it is doesn't it in, matter. Is it you, in the program? No fire over here is the goal. So as a manager managing that, just think outside the box of what are they really doing? Right. And that helps answer some of those questions of realistically, what can we normally expect to happen during this and what's likely to happen? And let's start putting buffers. In place. So that's part of our solutions. Yep. Evaluate what you're actually doing. Yep. For your your team, yep. not not everyone. The way the you generic, do the job, the generic online permit from wherever may not be adequate. You yep. may need to add some more information. I can tell you right now, most of the generic permits I see throw them right in the trash when it comes to the fire watch part because they're garbage. They don't tell me anything about when it starts, how long it should be, who's yeah, doing so the, it, how long. So did we did we walk away and check in thirty minutes or did we stand there? I don't know. I can't tell from that document. Oh, it's in the shift. Do we really gotta do thirty minutes? Because yeah. I, I don't do overtime. Or if it's a mill, is it I come back I stand there for thirty minutes and then I come back and check in sixty or am I standing there for sixty? Did or I two use hours. A, did I use a temp gun? They don't tell me any of that information. Correct. And in some industries that's vitally important because of the risk associated with hot work given the flammability of, Absolutely. of the product we're working around. So the the so solutions is evaluate what you're actually doing. Yep. No and fire. The risk. No fire. And then yeah. everything in between you need to get a plan for. Because yeah. I do. When I walk up, I'm like, where's the fire going to be is how I start. I don't start yeah. with a permit. Yeah. And start, where's the chance of having a fire? And what's all the things we're doing to make sure that doesn't happen? Yes, permit's part of it. Yeah. But all this other stuff's got to be part of it. Well, and I think a caveat to that is designated welding areas. Correct. The intent of designating a certain spot as a designated welding area means, in my world... Now, not, I'm not where you no, store the flammable. <laughs> no, I'm going to say, this is just our opinions. Take it how you want. Do a risk assessment. Interpret it how you want. Your company, your insurance, whoever. But this is what we've seen over 25 years. So, just throw that out there. So in my world, a designated welding area means I am keeping that area in compliance with the hot work permit all the time. 35 foot. Clear. Not, I just brought in a box of flammables, like you said, a right. cardboard box, or I'm storing all my parts that I'm welding on in cord- cardboard boxes on the shelf. It's not a welding shop or a maintenance shop just automatically complies. No, we've got to still meet the intent of the permit because the intent of the permit is we don't burn the shop down. We don't burn everybody's eyes walking past on the way to break right. or whatever, you know? So that's this. Your failures are your fire watch. You're not really sure where or what they need. So yep. get them some training. Be to, so if it's a 35 foot area on the original permit and you need a fire watch, you have to start selecting how many you're going to need. And it can't Based be on the just job. visual. Yep. So if I've got three conveyors and it's going to take me a few minutes to get there, it's about timing more than anything else. You get supposed to put yeah. out the firewall. It's small, not by the time I get there, it's big. Well, I think it goes back to your fire training too. Are we a fire brigade or are we using two and we're out? Right. You know, I mean, so, so, so some of that has to do with your fire 
EAP emergency plans right. too. Is like, how many are we going to allow them to use before this? We're like, hey, this is more than we're right. really. This is not incipient stage anymore. So the goal, like you said, is have enough fire watches so you can get on that spark before it leaves incipient stage. Right. Permit, go back to your permit, think about the job you're going to do, and figure out between your training and your permit how to modify and get what you need done. Yeah. Whatever that task is. Yep. Filling it out, but not real. That one yeah. of our things we talk about is is that people, like you said, they check it and they don't even realize what it really means. I think that there's a, a disconnect in what that box really means. Right. So, so most of the time, I see this is always one that's checked. Is like, are the are the floors clear below? Right. And we always say, yeah. Well, not if it's shooting over a guardrail. Correct. You know, right. I mean, so we've so, got to just so, where are they going? Where's the spark? You can going? lay down blankets. Yeah, you can put on water. You can move everything you can do out all of there. Kinds of stuff. I, now, this last you can do few screens weeks, screens and shields, all kinds of stuff. Last few weeks, I did a lot of clear everything out and and barrier tape it. Yeah, you say no one come in that area because that's our clean area right now. And yeah, if we you bring something to it. Now we got to stop and we got a problem. Yeah, and, and and some of that with the barrier tape is it's also a great visual. For right. our fire watch, if we're managing this area, this is your area. This is your house. And especially if we're not because of the design of where we're having to do this, we can't bring in a, a screen or something. Absolutely. You know? So that's our that's our top players, I think. Yeah. If you want to reach out, if you've got other questions or anything, allensafetycoaching.com is a great resource. We've got an entire hot work module on this. So we break down everything in really, really great detail in terms of the program, what should be in it, how to manage it, how to manage the training. The, the, we show you permits on there and kind of break those all down. So that's a great option for you. Otherwise, you can reach out to us at allen-safety.com for some in-person services. We've got audits we do. We do all kinds of training, no secret. We do projects. We do a lot of projects. It's been yep. a lot of time with how it works. Sa yep, so. we do that quite a bit. And otherwise, you can reach out to us on social if you want to just kind of link up with us. LinkedIn, Joe Allen, Jen Allen. You can reach out there. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. All of the things. So Absolutely. you can reach out to us anyway. If you've got a request for an episode, send us a message and we'll try and get it worked in. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody. Take care. Thank you for listening to Safe, Efficient, Profitable, a worker safety podcast. If you're looking for more in-depth discussions or step-by-step -step solutions on all of the different safety and regulatory topics, please visit us at www.allensafetycoaching.com for web-based virtual coaching and training or at www.allen-safety.com to book our team for on-site services, training sessions, to order merchandise, to learn more about our team and what services we provide in the field, or just some to request a topic for us to cover on our next podcast. If you found today's podcast helpful and would like to support our podcast further, please help us by subscribing, liking, and sharing this podcast with anyone that could benefit from the information we cover here as that helps us to continue to put out this free content. Thank you so much for your support.